All right. Well, welcome, everyone, and welcome back to those of you who are uh, still here from our first Let's Learn Live session today here in uh, TESOL 2022's Electronic Village, brought to you by the Computer Assisted Language Learning Interest Section. Uh, we are excited to welcome our next presenter who is joining us from Turkey, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Um, Jennifer Lacano, and she's going to be presenting Google Jamboard for collaborative communicative group work with synchronous monitoring. Um, and she is going to be talking um, about and sharing some practical strategies and ideas for using Jamboard in online classes for group work. Um, that's going to inspire student creativity and critical thinking and also allow for real time monitoring of work. And she hopes that you all are going to leave with some knowledge of how to set up a Jamboard activity and several time saving strategies. That is something I always appreciate, Jennifer. So uh, welcome. I will turn things over to you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Heather. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, I am going to share my screen. Um, I'm actually going to share my full desktop, which might be a no-no in most cases, but I do have a reason for that. I'm going to be going back and forth between um, some different applications. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let me minimize this one. Um, so um, as Heather mentioned, this is the title of my session, but it's quite a mouthful. Um, I tried to make it descriptive so people would understand what we were doing, but I prefer to call this session Jammin' with Jamboard. So I do have a quick question for you guys. Um, let me see if I can find the chat. Here we go. Um, if you can join this Mentimeter, um, here it is. See. <clears throat> All right, here is the QR code if that's easier for you. I just want to find out a little bit about um, your experience already with Jamboard, if you have any. Um, so I've got a few questions here. Great, let me take a look here. Excellent. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you already know how to do many things, um, which is great. Um, so some of the stuff that I'm sharing with you might seem a little bit basic, but I hope that you can still um, get a few tips that you can take away from this session. <clears throat> All right. So I know there are definitely some of you who it looks like you haven't used Jamboard before, so hopefully you'll learn a lot in this session as well. All right. I'm actually going to close the chat for now. Um, so thank you very much for your feedback um, on this. And let's go ahead, because um, 20 minutes is not a lot of time, I've realized. Um, so here are the things that I want to go over today, um, just some Jamboard basics and some time-saving tips. And I'm going to be looking at those and sharing my ideas for those in the context of more controlled practice, the kind of things that we might have done as a worksheet in our face-to-face -face lessons. Um, then I'm going to share with you some ways that I've um, found to do monitoring and synchronous feedback. Um, and I will share with you those ideas um, as I've used them in more free practice. Okay. And then um, some ideas for after the jam, after your class session. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, if you do have questions um, throughout, you can ask them. Um, I can't have my chat window open all the time um, since I'm sharing my full screen, but I will try to, um, I'll try to get to your questions if I am able. <clears throat> I'll collect questions for you too, Jen. Great, thank you so much, Heather. Um, so what is Jamboard? Just basically, it's a digital interactive whiteboard, and it's from the Google um, suite of applications. So you will need to have a Google um, account in order to use Jamboard, but your students will not. You can share it with them even if they don't have a Google account. Um, and it can be used for a range of activities from controlled practice to much freer practice. Um, so one of the reasons I, I started doing this, I kind of taught myself, you know, using Google, um, YouTube, 
looking at what other people had done before, because when I was in the online space with my students, I missed those opportunities for them to do collaborative work um, <clears throat> on something like a worksheet, for example, um, or creating a project together. I found that hard to do in our Blackboard um, online sessions. And I think that Jamboard is one excellent tool that we can use to do the same kinds of things we used to do in a face-to-face -face classroom and maybe even take it beyond that, right? Get more creative as well. Um, so let me show you. <clears throat> Here is a basic jam, um, that's what they call it. Um, so if you were to go to Jamboard, um, just for those of you who maybe haven't used it before, to create a new one, you can create, click on the plus sign here. Um, but I will be using ones that I've already set up. So here is our basic jam. Um, what I've found is that Jamboard doesn't have the same kind of functionality that you would find in, let's say, Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint in terms of editing. Um, text in terms of copying text and copying items. Um, so I hope that the shortcuts, the tips that I share with you today will help um, get around some of that, um, let's say, reduced functionality in Jamboard. So let's say you have a worksheet that you want the students to work on in your online class, um, and you want them to work in groups, right? So you need multiple copies, for example. Um, so what I would usually do is throw the text into Word, um, edit it the way I needed to in Word, and then copy it over into Jamboard. So let me show you how you can do that. <clears throat> so now I've got the text on my clipboard. Um, this is the text box tool. You can click on that. And then there's a problem, right? You can't see it. Okay, there is not a way to adjust the font. There's not a like a font size changer. So the way you do that is to adjust the size of the text box. Um, this one adjusts the shape on the sides here. If you click on this corner, click and drag, it adjusts the size. All right, and then you can just click on it um, as long as you're on the arrow tool. Um, let's say I want to make this wider. All right, <clears throat> so now I've got my worksheet in a Jamboard. Um, one of the things I've found is that students sometimes when they're working on the Jamboard, um, here's another example, is that when they click on things, they might accidentally move them. And that can create problems for other students working on the same Jamboard. Um, Command Z on a Macintosh does work as an undo or this button here also works as an undo function. Um, but to, this is what I'm calling protecting the original text. Um, the way you can do that is to do a screen grab or a screenshot um, and then set it as the background. So on a Macintosh, um, I use Command Shift 5. If you're on a Windows machine, you might be able to use the snipping tool. That's what I use at my office. Um, on campus um, and you can then do new. I love this feature of Jamboard. It's a laser pointer, it disappears. So you can click on new here and then this is for copy, okay? So let me show you, let me go back to my first page and I will do my screen grab of just this slide, let's say, calling it a slide. <clears throat> So this is the text I want to have on my new Jamboard that I want the students to be able to use but not change. So I do my screen crap capture, sorry. And then on a new page, oops, <clears throat> I can set the background. So now my screen crap capture, I'm using my image, finding it, they always save to my desktop on my computer. Um, so here is the screenshot. Double click and insert that. <clears throat> so now students cannot change this. They can add things, 
like the answers, right? They were oops, waiting. Okay, and if you need to adjust the size, you can click there. Um, just so you know, this one changes the orientation um, and this one has some other functions. Now, one of the time-saving tips I've found is that if, I'm, if I wanna create this for multiple groups, especially if it's something that's taken a long time to set up. This one, for example, could be done with vocabulary where the students will move things, um, but it took a while to set up, right? I had to do each of these separately. So I don't wanna have to do that for every group. So a quick way to copy a page, duplicate a page, um, is to click here on the expand frame bar. Um, and then you click on the kebab menu and it says duplicate, right? So now I have two of the same page and I don't have to create all these individual text boxes again. Right, so again, that was expand frame bar. Click here on the kebab menu, which sometimes <laughs> doesn't like to cooperate, um, but that's where you would find the duplicate function. There we go. <clears throat> right, let me share with you a different um, Jamboard. This one is an unscramble activity. So I know a lot of my students might have linguistic skills or linguistic intelligence, but maybe not the spatial intelligence to be able to do unscramble activities without seeing things in the new order, right? So here they can manipulate the different sentences or the different words. This is elementary level. This one here was um, a more upper intermediate level where they're working on essay introductions. But again, it took a long time to set up all of these text boxes, all the different sentences and words. So that's when the duplicate function um, can be really helpful. Another way or another thing that I've done, because I use some of the same tools, some of the same jams with multiple groups, um, I like to duplicate my entire jams. So to do that, you can click here, again, the kebab menu and make a copy. <clears throat> so now I have a copy of this jam. So this way I don't have to reset my entire jam if I'm gonna use it with a different class or maybe I'll use it next semester or next year. Um, I, I can keep an original copy and then I don't have to move everything back after my students have played with it. Um, so one thing to always remember is to make sure you grant access to your students. You can do that by clicking on the share button. And then here where it says get link, change to anyone with the link, make sure it's set to editor. Okay, and then you could copy the link and I am gonna share that with you in a little bit. Um, and you can share it with your students in your online space. Um, another thing that I've done sometimes is to create an answer key, um, which I can then upload quickly as a background. So I'll create the answer key, do the screen grab, and then I can set it as my background. So this one is actually for my previous Jamboard that I shared with you, um, but you'll be able to see all the answers in just a second. <clears throat> okay, so maybe we don't have time in class to go over all of the answers, um, but you can set it up this way. Um, one other function that I like to use is the sticky notes tool um, to set different groups. So maybe this is group one's page. Okay, so I tell them go to the page for your group and work together. Um, I would use this in conjunction with breakout rooms um, so that they could do the work on the activities together in a smaller group. So the monitoring and feedback. Um, there is a way to see who's in the room or let's say how many people are in the on the jam with you. 
Um, once you share the link with your students, you'll see different people pop up here. Um, and I'll show you that when I share the jams with you. Um, let me share with you this one. Um, so quicker navigation, if you want to go from page to page, instead of going one at a time, which can be very slow, you can use the expand frame bar. And then I could jump from page two to page four to six. It's a little quicker. Um, for giving feedback, or this is how I monitor the students. I can move from group to group easily to see how the different groups are doing on their page. Um, this one, I actually had the groups working on similar pages, um, but different tasks. So I could see how they were doing on the individual tasks. And I like to use sticky notes and emojis to give synchronous feedback, right? So here is a page um, where they were practicing paraphrasing. So they were to paraphrase this sentence using synonyms. Okay, so they started working on it and maybe they changed one of the words. Okay, and then another group maybe changed a different word. I said, okay, these are great ideas. Can we change even more words, right? Give young people work. Um, and so here, this one was where it all kind of came together. And as they were working, I could put in an emoji using the add image tool. So again, let me share with you, that was add image. This one that looks like mount a picture of mountains. And here you could do a Google image search for thumbs up. Okay, and then click on that, insert. And they always pop up in the middle, which can get a little bit messy, but then you can click and drag and adjust the size. Um, so if students are on the right track, I might give them a thumbs up to let them know, or I'll use sticky notes to um, give them suggestions or sometimes time warnings, right? If I want to let them know that we're running out of time, which it looks like we are running out of right now. <clears throat> so my final thing for after the jam, um, a lot of my students, because I've shared the link in the class, they don't keep that link. So sometimes I might want them to still have access, especially if it's a vocabulary practice or some grammar practice. So I might share the link with them again. Um, if you do that, it's often a good idea to restrict access. So they then cannot change things. So you don't have to keep checking to make sure everything is fine. So again, the way you grant or restrict access, um, it's with the share button <clears throat> where it says get link, change to anyone with the link. And again, you can go between viewer and editor. Um, so viewer restricts, they can view it, but they can't change it. Um, the other thing you can do is download the jam. So that's up here in the kebab menu on Jamboard itself. Um, you can download as PDF and then share that with your students. So I am going to try to share a link with you. Um, if you want to go on to, I think this was the, um, the unscramble activity. I believe that's the one I'm trying to share with you. Um, so if you wanna click on that and just play around with it a little bit, um, you can do that. But I think, I think that's my 20 minutes. And now, Heather, is it time for questions or is there more time to share a couple more things? Let's see. I would say you have about three or four more minutes if you have some more okay. tips you want to share and then we can move to questions. Okay, thank you, Heather. Um, so I do want to share with you some of the more free practice activities that I've done with my students. Um, so let's see, this one um, was students, it was a follow-up to a, a, an activity from our book. Um, students were talking about a gap year and what kind of gap year they might want to design. Um, so I set this up and took the screenshot so that the whole group was working on the same page. Um, okay, sorry about that, Aisha. Let me try to share that again. 
um, just the link to you guys. <clears throat> I think maybe I changed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's try this again. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so now um, you should be able to see on here where people are starting to join with the animal icons. So you can see how many people are joining. Um, again, if you click on expand frame bar, you can see which page the people are on. So someone has moved to page two, thank you. Um, and again, unless your students are logged in to their Google accounts, they're gonna come up as anonymous animals, um, but that's okay. So again, this is one of the more free practice activities that I've done with them. Um, so I set it up so that the whole group was working on the same page. Um, and I gave them a sample and modeled for them how to add pictures, how to add text, how to add drawings. And my students really had fun with this and got really colorful and creative and you know, were able to express themselves and communicate more about themselves and who they are. Um, so that one was a really fun one I enjoyed. And this one as well, um, they were talking about childhood memories. So I had some instructions on the first page and then they were able to add text and pictures um, and talk to their group and then share together when we came back as a full class. So let me get back to our page. It looks like some of you are having fun with moving things around. Um, so I hope, um, yeah, I've created, I created a lot of duplicates of the same two pages because um, I didn't know how many people would actually be attending. Um, but hopefully you can see how it can be used. Um, and I hope this has given you a little bit of confidence. I would say the best thing to do is just go in and play with it on your own. Um, and, you know, when you're using it with your students, make sure you give them some time to do that as well. Um, you know, teach them how to do things on Jamboard, um, maybe teach them some um, digital respect and digital etiquette as well, um, if necessary, and have fun with it. So thank you very much um, for your attention and I am happy to take any questions. Um, so Brian, you're asking how to create groups. Um, I would just create separate pages for the different groups and use it with um, breakout rooms in, um, so our online system was Blackboard, so we use Blackboard Collaborate, um, but Zoom breakout rooms, um, whatever um, online lesson system you have should have a breakout room function. Um, and sometimes you can assign specific students to the groups and you can set up the Jamboard to reflect that. Um, you know, if you have certain students that work better together or certain students that don't work well together, um, you could set that up in advance as well. Great, we, we had a couple of questions from earlier, Jen. We had a question from Thomas asking about, is there an easy way to monitor individual student engagement um, for participation or the like? Yes, that one I haven't figured out. I think if you were, if the students were logged into their Google account, I think you would see them, um, you know, instead of anonymous. Um, but again, if they're, if they're three students working on the same page, um, it's really hard to tell who's doing what. Um, what I would do when I was using this is I would try to visit each of the breakout rooms, depending on how much time I had. So I can see, you know, I can monitor what they're doing on Jamboard, but then I could also visit individual rooms to see who is actually talking um, and get some feedback from them um, and check on them that way. Definitely. So you have sort of a general sense of participation um, on the Jamboard mm -hmm. and then specific within the rooms. Yes. May I, ask, yeah. may I ask here a question, please? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, like in this, uh, uh, in these jumble uh, sentences, mm -hmm. uh, do students have the, the, the chance of uh, writing themselves or they have just to uh, move the, the words and uh, write the sentence correctly? 
Yeah, for, for this activity, I set it up as an unscramble, um, but you could also set it up. Um, let me share with you. So this one I did, it's a slightly higher level, um, a higher level activity. Um, they were actually writing or revising different sentences. Um, I've done activities where they have to write their own thesis statements. Um, this was a difficult paraphrase activity. Um, but you could set it up so that they write their own sentences. Yes. I'm asking about the, the one you were just showing that the man is wearing a hat, etc. cetera. Um, yes. So, you know, um, this activity was set up for them to unscramble. But what you could do is say, you know, give the instructions that after you've unscrambled the sentence, write a similar sentence using the same structure um, underneath. My, my, my question is like, suppose like we are uh, teaching our students to begin the sentence with a capital letter to end mm -hmm. it with a full uh, stop. So uh, these things are like allowed, like students are allowed to do that or just they have to write it correctly. I mean, to join the sentence in a proper way and that's enough. Yes, so here in the directions, I've said um, they should use the pen tool to add capitalization and punctuation. So I would uh -huh. have taught them how to use the pen tool. I didn't have time to do that with you guys, but let me show you how that would work. So you could do this, the pen tool, like that. That's a very bad period. It's hard to make just a dot that's visible. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Thank I was a little you. confused about what you were asking. Thank you. Excellent. Um, we had one question um, that will probably be our last for today about what to do if students erase some of the content um, that's needed. Um, for example, in this manipulation one, what if they deleted some of the words that need to be moved around? Yeah, that's something that could happen. Um, and again, it might be an opportunity to, to let's see. It could happen on purpose or it could happen accidentally. Um, if it's happening on purpose, you feel like you can talk about digital etiquette, um, you know, maybe just emphasize to students to be respectful to each other, try to create that atmosphere. If it happens by accident, um, you can, you know, use the undo tool. Um, or this is one of the times when, you know, you as the teacher are monitoring things and, you know, just kind of checking to make sure um, everything is is working okay. Um, so you just have to kind of keep on top of that. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. And I always have a rule um, that that touching the clear frame rule, the clear frame button, if you don't oh, mind pointing yes. that out, um, yeah. that that will erase the entire frame. Um, so yeah. that's always a no ghost uh, area for my students. So that's an important yes. um, sort of group Thank rule you, to set up that we don't ever touch clear frame. Um, definitely. Well, yeah. Um, John, you have shared a lot of, uh, as you promised, great time sharing tips. Um, and I think a lot of people will also appreciate the chance to go back to the recording that is shared on YouTube um, to spend a little bit of time maybe working with Jamboard alongside some of the tips that you shared. So um, thanks, to, thanks for all that you um, offered our group today. And uh, thank you, audience. Um, lots of great, great questions coming in and suggestions and tips from you all as well. Uh, I always learn not just from the presenter, but from those that are participating in the sessions as well. Um, I shared in the chat um, a, let me pop this back up here real quick. Um, I shared in the chat, a link to some resources that the Electronic Village team put together last year about uh, getting to know Jamboard and um, as well as some other video tips and free resources there. So in addition to the great information that Jen shared today, uh, there are some other resources that we compiled for you. Um, and as I said, uh, the recording of this session and many of the other live sessions from the Electronic Village are available now and will be added the rest of the day uh, to the Call IS YouTube channel. And you can see that there in the screen share area. And the last thing I want to leave you with is um, I hope that uh, I'll see some more of you in our last Let's Learn live session in about an hour. And um, 
that you've enjoyed learning with us in the Electronic Village uh, this year. Um, but I wanted to let you know that at the uh, towards the end of the conference day today in the chat, I'm sharing it. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the computer assisted language learning interests section and what we do and how you might get involved, maybe you want to present next year, maybe you want to volunteer with us. Our open meeting is going to be today at 3.30 Eastern time. So you might have to do some time zone conversions for that. And it's gonna be right here in the same Zoom room that we're in now. So um, hopefully we'll see many of you there at the open meeting and uh, you can think about some ways that you can contribute um, your knowledge and experience to the computer aided, or excuse me, computer assisted language learning interest section. So with that, we'll close up here. Thank you 